Hey guys, this is Luke from the Scoundrels Cantina, and welcome to another episode of A Star Wars Story. In this video, I'll be telling you the story of the leader of the Death Watch, Pre Vizsla, who is most notably seen in one of our favorite parts of Star Wars, which is the Clone Wars TV show. As always, we're mixing the expanded universe and canon, because we believe that there is no reason why most of it can't fit together. So anyway, let's begin. Pre Vizsla was a human male from the planet Mandalore who was the leader of the Mandalorian faction called Death Watch during the Clone Wars. He is a descendant of the Mandalorian Jedi Tar Vizsla, who was the creator of the Darksaber, as well as a few other notable members like Shea Vizsla and Tor Vizsla. During the Clone Wars, Vizsla was seeking to overthrow Duchess Satine Kryze and her pacifistic new Mandalorian government in order to restore Mandalore to its old warrior ways. He secretly allied himself with Count Dooku and the Confederacy of Independent Systems. While governing Mandalore's moon Concordia and maintaining loyalty to Satine Kryze in public, Vizsla led the Death Watch in secret from several Concordian mining camp bases. The Death Watch terrorist attacks on Mandalore came to a pause when Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi arrived on Concordia with Kryze to follow leads on the Death Watch. When Kenobi discovered the Death Watch's secret base, Vizsla confronted him with several warriors and revealed himself as the leader. He then revealed his ancient weapon, which was the Darksaber, after which he engaged Kenobi in a short duel. Eventually Vizsla forced him and Satine to flee Concordia. Pre Vizsla conspired with Mandalorian Senator Tal Merrick to capture Satine during her journey to Coruscant, where she intended to plead her case directly to the Galactic Senate. During the voyage, the ship was attacked by battle droids, and eventually before being able to kill Satine, Merrick was stabbed by Anakin Skywalker through the back. Anakin. What? He was gonna blow up the ship. Meanwhile, the Death Watch had been amassing an army of troops on Concordia in preparation to take over Mandalore, and Vizsla was forced to wait until his and Dooku's plot to turn Mandalore against the Republic was completed. Vizsla dispatched the Death Watch assassin to Coruscant to kill Satine, as her death would remove the opposition to the Senate's upcoming vote to have Republic troops occupy Mandalore, an occupation which would allow the Death Watch to gain the support of Mandalore's populace and liberate them from the Republic. However, the assassin failed to murder Kreez, and the plot itself fell apart, with the Senate voting against occupying Mandalore. With this turn of events, Vizsla was forced to postpone his attack on Mandalore, because his forces would be unable to hold the planet without its people's support. Following the aborted plan, Vizsla met with Count Dooku in person. He managed to anger the Count so much, to the point where the Sith Lord released his lightsaber and slashed Vizsla across his face, leaving a scar. After that, Vizsla broke ties with the Separatists and vowed to kill Dooku. Alongside the Death Watch, he would then find refuge on the planet Karlak, where he held the local Ming Po as hostages while pillaging their villages for women and supplies. He would also become allied with Lux Bonteri, who also swore to kill Count Dooku and avenge his mother's death. Eventually, Ahsoka Tano would thwart their plans and fight against Pre Vizsla while trying to escape Karlak with the now clear thinking Lux Bonteri. At some point after this, Vizsla and his soldiers came across an escape pod lost in deep space, which held the stranded Sith Lords, Darth Maul and his brother Savage Opress. Harboring a common hatred of Obi-Wan Kenobi for his actions against them, they planned on having their revenge after their planned conquest of Mandalore. They gathered an army of criminals, which included the Huts, the Pikes, and the Black Sun. Vizsla and Maul eventually attacked Sandari, making it seem as if the Death Watch were the heroes trying to save the people from the criminals and their Sith Masters, and at the same time showing the people how weak their pacifistic government was. With the support of the Mandalorian people, Vizsla ousted Satine and appointed himself Prime Minister and claimed the ancient title of Mandalore. He also betrayed his Sith allies, who were then imprisoned, but managed to escape shortly after and planned their next move. That led to Darth Maul challenging Pre Vizsla to a duel to determine who is stronger and more worthy of ruling Mandalore, while knowing the Mandalorian Code of Honor, which Vizsla would not reject. 
After a long and fierce duel with many different types of weapons and combat styles, Darth Maul was able to defeat Pre Vizsla, after which he decapitated him in front of his men and claimed a seat as leader of Death Watch. Anyway guys, this is it on the story of Pre Vizsla and we hope you all enjoyed it and learned something new about the vast galaxy of Star Wars. If you want to watch more videos like this one, the link to the playlist for our other Star Wars stories will be in the description down below. And also, if you want to support this channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one. And remember guys, God is awesome, may the force be with you always, and we'll see you in another video. You rebel scum. This party's over.